The Miami Heat uh, went on a 13-game winning streak. Streak. They beat two good teams, like the Rockets and the Warriors, in the streak. Then they lost two, and they came back and beat the Rockets yesterday. Yes, the Miami Heat Francis deserve credit for what they have been doing. Uh, they're winning with defense. They're winning with a stretch of defense in the middle of the regular season that is allowing actually one less than one point per possession. Okay. I'm being very harsh and very critical, and I get that they beat the Warriors, but I think a lot of this is on Eric Spolstra and not the players. I think Eric Spolstra was trying to do too much with what he had and realized that he could flip it around and start to figure out that, shit, our front court in Hassan Whiteside, we can get him to start playing at a level that's not just marked by his numbers. And the front court is being done by guys, guys like Goran Dragic who are playing to the 2013 form and guys like Deion Waiters who, you know, when he gets hot, he's, a, he's like J.R. Smith. He's going to want to shoot. Am I being too harsh? I think you're being too harsh. I'm being really harsh. <laughs> you like the heat too. That's why I forgot that. I'm I do like the heat, but I think you're being too harsh in the context that you're caught up with a new LeBron James Cleveland Cavaliers team that almost feels like they've been around for a oh, while. I'm actually an asshole. The Celtics that, would beat them in four games. <laughs> the Raptors will beat no, them in but, four games. No, but but also that is like I look at other franchises in the NBA who have been great, lost a lot of their star power, lost maybe what they had in the past, and simply fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So I think that what the Miami Heat have done with their phenomenal, almost unbeatable team, what, 2013? Does it, it's not that long ago, man. And if, when you lose, not just the star player, right, who ends up going on and furthering his career, <laughs> you lose, like, because Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch's performance were altered after that. Then Chris Bosch goes out, can't play. Dwayne Wade tries to carry them as far as he could, takes them to the playoffs even, still gives the fans consistent mm -hmm. basketball in comparison to what other franchises have done. And yeah, Spo tried to do what he could in a very similar fashion to when he had the big three. He's trying to rely, he's trying to do too much with some of the players that he had instead of trying to rebuild. But imagine that, man. You literally have all the ingredients to make the best dish possible. You feasted on a fantastic pasta and all of a sudden, no Parmesan cheese. Oh, no bolognese. Oh, you've just got, and you're trying to eat the pasta the same way you'd eat it before. No, you mix that pasta up. You maybe try to get some other flavors out of it. As, my point you being... You described your lunch. I know, it was really good. Pasta. My mouth actually watered when I described lunch, it, but you get my point. Your lunch, I do. I do get your point. I'm being harsh, I understand that, but I, I'm going to tell you a little bit more as to why. Object, objectively speaking, like I said before, they're doing it through defense. They have, like, the sixth-ranked defense in the league right now, at least since January 1st. Uh, Hassan Whiteside, his, he's not stat-hunting. No. anymore, as much as he used to be. Now, anybody who really watched Hassan Whiteside in the past two years knows that Hassan Whiteside will purposely leave his man in his assignment, same effect as marking, if you just leave the marked man uh, in football, to try to get a steal or a block, yeah. and then when he didn't get it, he'd be allowing points. When he was on the floor, there were way more points allowed on defense when Hassan was on the floor compared to when he was off the floor. That's changing. That's big. Tyler Johnson saying some of the young talent. It's true. Uh, but I want to go to the game log. This is the second element. The standings, you know, we'll show you these. Like they're 25, they're two and a half games out of the eight seed, I think. But uh, the game log is important because there's only three games that mean anything to this entire list of wins. The Rockets and the Warriors are quality wins. Don't get me wrong at all. And the Rockets, again, but every other win on that doesn't mean much to me. The Nets, three times. The Mavericks, the Bulls have not been playing well. They beat a Hawks team that deserves some respect. So I'm being harsh because I don't see them as 14-2 and two over the last 16. I'm like 6-2. and two. I see them more as like 7-5, and five, mm. right? I know they didn't lose some of those, but I'm not counting some of those wins. So... I think this hot streak is nice. I think they're taking advantage of a time where it's the middle of the season and maybe some teams are getting tired and they're clicking at the right time. But I don't, and I could be so wrong, I will eat crow like the fans will say if I'm wrong about this, but I still don't think they make the playoffs. And I don't think they should be buyers at the trade deadline. Mm. I don't think they should be trying to bring in new pieces to make an eight or seven seed playoff push. I think they should stay put exactly as they are keep all of their picks, keep their players, and then come back next year with this team in place and maybe a free agent pickup or two and, that's where, and move forward. And that's where I, I give them a little bit more slack because 
we're going way back, but look how many years it has taken the Boston Celtics to get back into a position where they can yeah. start. No, I'm talking about even when they had big players, like they oh, had a yeah, big yeah. three. I'm talking about, yeah, they, they had some moments where you're like, ah, oh, the Boston Celtics look good. But I'm talking about now, consistently, if you're a Celtics fan, you can honestly put your hand up and say, this is the best position we've been in since... Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Absolutely. Ray Allen. Since the day they signed those Since guys, it's the best position. And it's taken there. them a while to do so. So the reason I give the Miami Heat is they were a franchise that was great, relying on the best basketball player on the planet to take them to the next level. And then when you rely on that, you're, it's not just that LeBron James was playing, is you build your whole team around that. And you build your whole team to work in order to benefit him. Dwayne Wade taking less shots, allowing LeBron James to be the star man. Then when he moves on, that franchise could have easily fell off a cliff. They could have just took a nosedive. And I feel like uh, some credit has to be given to them that they're still competing. And they're still being a team that is not looked down upon in the East. Now, the Eastern Conference is not as competitive. This is maybe a different story, and that's why I give the OKC a little bit slack. A little bit slack compared to the way some people scrutinize them for the way they've been trying to play. Like, it's not just because one player left. Everything that went into that team was built around Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So... The fact that they're still able to compete and they're still able to maintain a, a certain level of a high standard, maybe I'm just too soft. Maybe I, you're not going to get your Stephen A. Smith takes from me, but I'll be like, I don't think it's as fair to completely rip them apart for the way they've been playing. It takes time harsh. to rebuild. I was harsh. No, no, I, just you weren't that harsh. I'm talking about what I, I've heard other people be harsher. It's just the, what I, when I see the narratives of like the heat are on fire. No, the heat on, like look. I man, mean, it's because the, the word heat. Don't forget that gag. they put they dug themselves a deep hole in the start of the season because of some bad, uh, some bad. I think the word to use here is schematics. Big word. They Go sneak, on and win it all. If they sneak into the eight. I still won't admit I'm wrong about this one because uh, they're two and a half games out of the eight and two and a half games from like the bottom of the pack. So. Look who they're competing with, like the fucking Knicks and the Magic. Do it, Spo. Spo. I like Spo. I've always liked Spo. Even when LeBron was trying to get rid of him. <laughs> I like Spo. like his hair. I like it. I'm down with that. Comment below. Like, favorite, subscribe. We're done. We're out. I'm going to go get lunch now.